Right, diving straight into this. Um, what I have set up here is essentially my default template uh, with a couple of extras. Uh, so just for this video's sake, I've put in a channel here and I've just dropped in all the samples I've used basically. Um, so I'll go through those obviously as and when I need them. And then here I've put in a MIDI channel and I've just dropped in to save me having to rewrite all of these. I've just dropped in the main chords and phrases and bits and pieces in there so we can just get started. Normally my default template has the Moog Sub 37 just as standard. Um, it, it's one of those synths that I use in pretty much everything I do. So I have the MIDI channel and then an audio in to record in whatever I come up with on the Moog. Um, however, in this instance, I've just grabbed that file. So I'll show you this is the original recording I made uh, by hand on the Moog uh, to make the track. And so I'll just leave that there. So for now, I'm just going to get rid of those. And we're essentially in a blank template. I've got the arrangement screen over here and the first thing I did for making structures uh, I don't generally start with anything in particular so you know sometimes I'll start with maybe some drums and I'll just develop a groove sometimes I'll come up with a melody idea it's, it's you know it's just whatever I, I find the most creative you can be is is just without trying to do something so that's exactly how this track came together i wasn't really trying to to do anything um so what i did start with though is essentially these main chords so i'm going to chuck that into the midi channel here and with that i started with lo and behold Sonic Academy Anna 2. So I'm going to chuck a copy of that in. And I'm instantly going to go menu and initialize preset. And so this should essentially just be a nasty saw wave now. Let's test it. So there we go. So hopefully. Right. So all I really did to start a track and then, and this is generally how I sort of work is, is sometimes I'll, I'll sort of start with maybe a melody or a chord phrase or whatever. There isn't really a key melody in this track. It was literally just a chord phrase. Um, and I just wanted something, I guess, almost generic. Uh, where did I start? There. So. You know, it's really only two notes. But generally what I'll do is, so in front of me, I've got the uh, uh, a MIDI keyboard and I'll sit in front of this and I'll literally just play some chords really and just see what happens, so. And that was basically, so, you know, it, it's really just experimenting um, and that's how I came out with these. Um, from there, I kind of decided I wanted the the sound to be obviously a, a lot less harsh than just a simple saw wave. So what I did was oscillator one, I kept a saw, uh, I think I gave it two voices, so it's just a bit thicker. And you get a bit more detune out of that then as well. I bring the detune down a bit by default in Anna, to be honest. And then I basically did exactly the same on Oscillator 2. I give that two voices as well. Which really just thickens out the sound. And what I did with uh, this preset in particular was the fine tuning. I just knocked it up a bit, whatever, 11's fine. And then I did the opposite direction, bring the fine down, whatever, 7's fine. 
And then if I play it again, that's basically detuned it between the two oscillators. So in oscillator one, you've got a bit of detune between the two voices. In oscillator two, I'll bring that detune down a bit as well. You've got a bit of detune between the two voices. And then you've also got, because I've fine tuned oscillator two up a little bit and oscillator one down a little bit, you've now got some additional detune. So it really just thickens the chord out. And then in the effects section, I added a bit of chorus. Um, I'm pretty sure I left it as default, to be honest. Let's have a listen. Yeah, probably not quite that wet. And then add a little reverb. So if I go insert two. Uh, where am I? Hall. And then probably bring the dry wet down a bit on this as well. Oh, switch it on might help. Yeah, bring the wet down. So it's just really making that just a, a, a more of an atmospheric sound than anything else. Um, and uh, and on that note, what I quite often do with this sort of a sound, because it's a digital synth and, you know, everything is spot on accurate. Uh, what I'll quite often do is I'll go into uh, the sampler here. And then I will look for essentially some white noise. Oh, here we go. I saw it there in the noise section here and then go down to white noise. And this is one of the great things that I love about Anna too, uh, is the fact that it's really that easy to find a sound. I, I thought I was going to have to scroll through for ages then. Um, so there we go. So we've got some white noise and I'll probably bring the volume up or down on this because it's a bit of a temperamental beast having white noise in a synth. But let's play that and listen. Yeah, so I'm just doing that by ear. Um, so I think I've brought that down. Yeah, minus 20 dB. Um, and I think that is basically it for the initial chords. Um, so those are the main chords that we'll have in the arrangement. Um, so I'm just going to copy those over and chuck them in over here for now so that we've got them in the arrangement. And so now they sound like this. So that's sounding pretty good, although I have noticed there's a little bit of clicking going on because the attack is at zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the attack of that and slide it up because actually I kind of wanted a bit more. I want the chords to slide in really and not to be so sudden. Yeah, there we go. So they slide in, but actually now I can on the hall maybe make it a bit wetter. Yeah, so there's a little more overlap now. Um, maybe even if I increase the decay. Yeah, that's much nicer. So I've got a four second delay uh, decay on the reverb now. And at the same time, I've uh, increased the attack to be a bit longer now as well. So there's, there's, it's just a smoother transition between those sets of chords. Um, and that's it for the main chords. Uh, then these next two are going to be pretty quick and easy. So what I did, I've called these Vox chords and I think I've just used a preset in there. So it was in Reactor.
and in Reactor, I'm a huge fan of Razer. Uh, anyone who's seen any of my other videos will have heard me or seen me talking about Razer. Uh, it's, so it's an additive synth. Um, it's made by Native Instruments for the Reactor player. And it's just it's just a, a, an incredible synth because it just doesn't really sound like any others, to be honest. Um, and in this, I think I used... Is it on the main screen? I don't think it is. Um, ah, there it is. It's right on the front page. Look. So it's called Vox Vocus. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I didn't touch anything in this. And I'm not convinced that I even changed anything in uh, the notation either. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, know, I've basically uh, just repeated that. So it's the same, same sound. Uh, but it sounds like this. Oh, there we go. So I have I have changed it. So I've given it a variation at the end. If you look at the notation of this. Um, where I have gone with the root notes to D, F, C, G on these ones I've gone D, F, G, A sharp so all I've done basically with this last set of chords is just raised it um, so that it still harmonizes and then when they're played together they should sound like this. I'll have to bring this volume down, I think. Let's have a listen. So it's just a case of finding chords that will harmonize with each other. So these are playing slightly different chord phrases uh certainly at, at the end the last phrase of 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 each sequence um and that will come into play a bit later on um but for now that's at least the sound design part of them done then moving on to the next one what i've done is i've i've done similar again so i've got harmony synth and i think harmony string yeah so harmony synth all i've done with these is just single notes and again i think i used razor again for this it was uh i think it was called cinematic pad let's have a look right so load up razor again Let's check the front page this time. No. Right, you'd hope cinematic pad will be in pads. There we go, cinematic pad. And that sounds like this. Oh, shall I play that? So now when they're all together, they sound like this. So that harmony is essentially just correlating with the root note of these I believe so G to A sharp at the end I 
Oh no, it's not thick. It's C to D. D down to C, and then raise an octave. C back to D. And then, I'm pretty sure I did, yeah, the same, but without jumping an octave here. So it's D down to C, hold that C note, and then back up to D. So it's really only two notes. Um, and the reason I did that is because it holds tension. And this is one of the things I often talk about with playing with melody and harmony. Uh, it's quite nice to sometimes, if you've got, say, uh, a four chord phrase, if you just throw in an additional instrument, something like a string. Um, in fact, with this one, I'm pretty sure I used contact in one of their string sections. And um, yeah, just a simple violin type or a, uh, even a, just a simple saw wave on a synth or something will, will do it. Um, and it just adds a little extra harmony just by sustaining that note in the middle of the phrase. It just adds a bit of tension. Uh, let's have a look. So it was Session Strings Pro. And it would have been sections one and two violins. And that will sound like this. So really, really simple. I mean, you know, that and that within the track as well, you know, I happen to have used Native Instruments um, Session Pro strings for that. But really, I mean, it could be anything. It could be a saw wave, could be a sine wave, could be anything, really. It's just to add that harmony. But when you throw it on top of, if I just play it with these main chords at the same time. And then throw in those Vox chords as well. It just holds that tension quite nicely across the board then. And then the last synth in this main melody, I call it the Nord Lead 3. I don't really know why. Um, I'm sure it used to be one of the sort of sounds I used to use on a Nord Lead and I just called it NL3 for that. But you can make it in pretty much anything, and proof of that, I'll use Anna 2 again. So, essentially, again, simple saw wave. Let me just solo the channel, and I'll show you what we've got playing in there in the first instance. So it's just those sort of triplet type notes. So it's just repeating exactly what the first main chords are. But what we're going to do with this is we're going to give it a stack of voices so it's nice and rich. Uh, screw it. Why not give it eight voices? And then we'll give it a low pass filter. And we'll just give it a little bit of envelope over here some filter envelopes so we can play with the uh, ADSR over here and we'll bring the cutoff right down as well and just by bringing that decay down really all you're doing is I mean you're giving it a couple of hundred millisecond of square wave and then immediately filtering out 
so that filter is is cutting in really quickly and and sort of instantly bringing it down because you want that really subtle and soft and then what we can do later on is we'll filter that decay time Maybe the filter as well, the the cutoff point as well, um, and also while we're here, we'll give it some reverb. In fact, actually, let's give it some ping pong first. So immediately giving it that ping pong effect you can you can hear really starts to give it a bit more rhythm and that's basically all we do so now we've got all five of these playing together and what we'll do later on in the arrangement is bring those in over time and so we can sort of develop the actual melody um, and make it a stronger piece. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.